This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Are you looking to enhance clarity in production without a PhD in observability? Try Honey Badger Insights. Honey Badger Insights is built around structured events and Honey Badger's new query language Badger QL, which allows you to analyze data, create metrics, and design custom dashboards. All of this is available for free with Honey Badger's monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, and more. Explore your data in new ways with Badger QL. It's pretty cool and simple. So give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. Recently, another product on once launched, and that's Writebook. Writebook is a way that you can publish your own ebooks in a self-hosted manner. And this is a free product that once released. So it's pretty cool to be able to dive into another 37 Signals product. However, in this episode, I want to talk about more of the maintainability side. Because once we have this downloaded and installed on our computer, wherever we are deciding to host it, whether it's a virtual machine out in the cloud or on a server that we have at home or in the office or a Raspberry Pi, we pretty much just have their source code. We don't have a direct way to access it or to see the changes in updates. We are able to just use this as a product, but we may find down the road that it's a little bit limited in what we want to do. So just as an example, which we're not going to explore in this episode, but maybe you want to make an export functionality where you can take a book that you have written and then export it as a PDF or something. So there's a few different hurdles that you have to get through. You first have to be able to download the source code in a way that you're then still going to be able to take the upstream updates. And then you have to configure your development environment in a way that you're then able to work on the project. And then you need some kind of branching strategy so you avoid merge conflicts as much as possible as you're taking them from the upstream. So we're going to take a look at all of those issues in this episode. So the first thing that you need to do is go to once.com and purchase the right book. Because it is free, that's the easiest one to get started with. You could go with Campfire, but that one does have a $300 price tag. So if you're wanting to follow along, I suggest going with Writebook at first. And once you sign up and purchase it, you'll eventually get an email with a code and some installation instructions, but we're going to set that aside for now. Within GitHub, we're going to go ahead and create our own repository. I'm going to put it under the Drift and Ruby forward slash writebook. I'm going to keep this as private because I'm not allowed to distribute that source code. And I'll just create the repository. So once we have the project created, I'm going to copy the link so we can then git clone this project. I'm going to do a git clone in my terminal and then the URL for the project. We can go into the writebook and we basically have an empty project. So that's fine. And we'll go ahead and launch up our editor. With our editor open, I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call it .github, and within there, I'll create another folder called workflows. And finally, I'll create a file called ingress.yaml. And so we'll give this a name, and I just want it to be called the update write book source, and then we can create a schedule. So on schedule, we can make this a cron schedule. So we'll do it every day at three in the morning. However, we also want the ability to trigger this manually if there was an update we're excited about and we didn't want to wait until the next day. So we could add a workflow underscore dispatch. We then need some kind of jobs. We'll call this one the update. We'll do a runs on and we're just going to use the Ubuntu dash latest and we need to set some permissions with the contents and we'll set it to write. So then we can get into the different steps that we're going to take. So essentially, we need to check out our current project so we can use the actions check out and we'll just use the version two just to make sure that we are able to delete files. So if 37 signals had deleted a bunch of files, we would want our source code to reflect that as well. So we can have a step to remove old files. We'll have a run command, which we can do at sh opt dash s extension global and then 
we can do a rm minus rf, but we want to exclude the dot get, the dot folder, and the dot dot. We then have another step, which we'll just label as the download and unzip source, which this will run a few different commands. We'll do a curl dash O, and we'll just call this our download dot zip. And we need to download this from auth dot once dot com forward slash download. And then we need that token. However, we don't want to put in our secret token directly in plain text. Instead, we're going to use a GitHub action secret. So we'll call it the secrets. And then we can just call this our purchase underscore token. We can then unzip that download folder with an unzip dash o and the download.zip. And of course, then we want to remove that download.zip. We're then going to have to create another step. And this is just to configure git. So we'll run another set of steps. And we just want to run the git config dash dash local our user dot email. And we're going to set it to the github dash actions at users dot no reply dot github dot com. We can do something similar for the name. So we'll have the same thing, but the user dot name and we'll call it the github dash actions. We'll then create another step. And this is our final one where we can commit and push the changes. We'll run a few more steps. And these steps are going to be pretty simple and familiar where we get add everything. And then, and then we can do a get diff staged and we'll do a quiet. And basically if there are changes, then we can do a double pipe and do a git commit dash m and we can say updated source files and just so we know when this occurred we can put in a date and apply some formatting we can then do a git push origin and we can then give it a name we could call it main or you could call it ingress but this is a point where you would have to start creating some kind of processes as you are making changes because you don't want changes coming in from this github actions ingress but then also have your changes on top. So what I like to do is to have a separate branch that I'm taking in all of the ingresses and then I will have my main branch that I'll rebase into from the ingresses. So I'm going to call this the ingress and we'll save the file. So that means we have our main branch and then we're also going to have an ingress branch. So on this main branch, I'm going to do a git add. We'll add everything, git commit. We'll then give it the message, added GitHub actions. We then also check out the branch called ingress. So now we have an ingress branch, and then we can do a git push. Of course, we have to set our upstream to the origin ingress, and that pushed up. We can get check out our main, and we can do a git push as well. So now back on GitHub, if we were to refresh our page, we have our ingress branch, and we also have our main branch. You may want to set your main branch as the default. So we can come under the settings and we're going to change the branch to our main as the default. So we now have our main branch, but we do have to do one more thing. Under security, under secrets and variables, and under actions, we need to create a new secret. This is going to be our purchase underscore token. And then we can paste in that token that we got from the email. I'm not going to show it on screen, but the email with the subject, how to install your new write book, it's pretty self-explanatory what that token is. But once we add that purchase token, we can come under the actions and we can go to our update write book source and we can now trigger this workflow. This workflow will run and we can come in and check on it. And this is where our first problem is going to be because we can't set our default branch different from what we're pushing. So when we do our checkout, instead of doing the default branch, we can add a width. And then our reference is going to be our ingress branch. I'm going to save these changes with a git commit and we'll do an updated actions. And then we can push this up back on GitHub. And so now we can go to our update writebook source and we can run this workflow. 
and we can click in here to see how it's doing. And it looks like the job completed. So if we go back to our code repository, on the main branch, it's empty. But if we look at the ingress branch, we now have all of the application code. So in our terminal, we can do a git pull to pull down the latest. And now we have all of the code on our ingress branch. We can do a git checkout main, and we can do a git rebase ingress, and we can force push this up. So now we basically have taken all of the ingress code. We've pulled it down. So we had the latest. We then rebased it onto our main branch, and we did a force push. You want to make sure that you're working on a clean branch state when you are doing the rebase just to avoid any potential errors. But now we have it pushed up. We have our ingress branch and we have our main branch. So now if I were to do any kind of changes, I'm going to always do it on our main branch or a branch off of the main branch. We are just using that ingress branch to take in changes from what 37 signals is updating. So now that I have my main branch, I can run bundle, making sure that I have all of the gems installed, but you see that we ran into our first error. We have our local Ruby version is 333, but the gem file specified 331. Now, I don't want to deviate too much from what we have from our ingress, so I'm going to use the Ruby gems that they specified. So I am using ASDF. So in my situation, I can do an ASDF local Ruby 331. I already have that version of Ruby installed on here, so I shouldn't have any issues. I can then run bundle and it'll install all of the gems that I need. I can then run my Rails application with the Rails S, but you may have some troubles with that if you have multiple Ruby versions installed. So it's always good to run the bin Rails S to start up the application. You'll see that starts it up. We can then go to our localhost 3000 and go ahead and run the migrations and it worked. So now we have our write book up and running on our local environment. If I were to shut down the server and run a git status, you'll see that we now have a lot of different files that are currently untracked. So we do want to touch the git ignore and we need to add some files in here. We need to add our log and we can add the development.log or you can do anything.log with an asterisk. We can also exclude the storage forward slash db forward slash everything. We can ignore the storage files and we'll ignore everything. And then we can also ignore the temp local underscore secret dot txt and the temp file restart dot txt. So if we save these changes and now do a git status, we should just have the two files and I want to commit that into our main branch. So I'll add these in, git commit, we'll add in a message, and now we should be good to push this up to our main branch. And there we have it. And so working on these kind of projects where you are still taking the ingress from 37 signals, but you're also adding in your own changes, you do have a risk of merge conflicts. So if you are taking in and rebasing in often, as you see changes coming in from the ingress, then you'll want to make sure that you're rebasing those into your project branches or your feature branches before you're merging it back into main. There is a point where you will start running into merge conflicts and you'll just have to resolve those as they come up. Or you have the option of no longer taking in the ingresses and rebasing them into your main branch. Because if your code base diverges too much from what's coming in, then it's going to be pretty difficult to address those merge conflicts. Just as an example, here we have six commits that have come in from the source files. And we can look at the commit details, where in this case, a lot of images were added. We got some markdown differences, and we got some style sheets and layouts. And there were just quite a few changes on here. And so that's just something you're going to have to take into consideration as you are making those changes. And maybe you would want to review what the differences are because you do have those all on the ingress branch. And again, if you ever want to just see if there's any updates, you can just come under the actions, update write book source, run the workflow. I'm going to run it on the main branch this time. 
simply because within the steps for the checkouts, we are referencing the ingress branch. And that did work. It updated successfully. And if we look at the checkout action, it did pull from the origin ingress. And so I haven't made any changes on the right book source yet, but I have done some on Campfire. And Campfire was the first product, but the main thing I did with it, because I did have a different hosting strategy that I was using for it, is that I wanted to use Kamal. So if you want to dive into episode 440, you can see how I did that. And I would probably set up something similar for once, just so I could have my own deployment strategy where I'm deploying my main branch with all of those changes instead of taking in the updates directly from once. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.